Who are the top prospects to stash? Find out next on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5 on Saturday, May 25th. I am Frank Stanfield, joined by Scott White and the five prospects on the verge. Junior Caminero of the Rays, Jackson Holiday of the Orioles, James Wood of the Nationals, Jason Dominguez of the Yankees, and Tyler Black with the Brewers. New addition to this list, Scott, Jason Dominguez, who is currently rehabbing his Tommy John surgery, and we got a little glimpse last year. Lots to be excited about. The problem, where does he fit in with the Yankees this season? And uh, honestly, you asking that question is the reason why I feel justified including him among prospects to stash. Because, yeah, he is a prospect. He hasn't used up his rookie eligibility yet. But if this was purely a rehab assignment because he had a spot to call his own, like a, a spot just waiting for him in the Yankees outfield, then I, I, I'm not sure that a prospect's report would be the right place to address Jason D- Dominguez. But uh, because Aaron Boone's already talked about how he's likely to be optioned at the end of this rehab assignment, then okay, I think it's worth treating him as a minor leaguer. Of, of course, it could change between now and then. One of Aaron Judge, Giancarlo Stanton, Alex Verdugo, or Juan Soto could get hurt. Heaven forbid it could happen. But if it doesn't happen, then yeah, Dominguez is just going to have to bide his time in the minors, uh, even though he came up last September and for a week was a total world beater prior to hurting his elbow, four home runs. Uh, During that time, he has great stolen base ability, just really impressive prospect. And, you know, even if if there is an injury, uh, I'm not sure the 20-day rehab window is going to be enough for him to be totally ready anyway because he's playing dh right now he's not even moved to the field so he's going to need some time in the minors uh regardless of what happens in the yankees outfield but yeah worth bringing up there isn't an opening for him now um others to talk about on this list so junior Caminero and jackson holiday they're both not performing that well lately at AAA. Uh, their overall numbers still look fine, but they're they're not exactly forcing the issue. And so I don't think either player is like the call up is imminent for either Comanero or Holiday. Still the top top prospects to stash. They're still going to be up at some point. They're still very high end. Um, James Wood maybe deserves to rank ahead of them now. Maybe. Just because of the way he's performing, he is forcing the issue. But I don't think the Nationals are are going to rush it. They have uh, a lot of guys in their outfield. Jason Winker, or sorry, Jesse Winker, Eddie Rosario, uh, who are performing well enough that they probably want to see if they can turn them into trade chips. It's not like they're really competing this year. James Wood will be up soon enough, but I, I think it's probably still a month away. The five prospects on the periphery, these are names that are doing something as of uh, of note as of late. And a couple names, uh, Drew Thorpe with the White Sox, Brennan Davis with the Cubs, Carson Williams with the Rays, Davison De Los Santos with the D-backs, and Luke Keyshaw of the Twins. Scott, I think this is an incredibly interesting group. I mean, you got some high-end names here. Brennan Davis, who was a top prospect and he fell off and now he's back hitting home runs and De Los Santos was in the rule five draft. He's returned to the D backs and he's crushing it in the minors. This is just, this is a really interesting group. Yes, it is. Uh, Brennan Davis. We talked last week about how Zach Veen was kind of messed up by a wrist injury for a couple years and, and fell out of favor in prospect circles, but then has come roaring back this year. And the same things happened to Brennan Davis. In his case, it was a back issue it doesn't look like he's fully back because the mobility isn't quite where it was, but in, in terms of power and patience, that's there. Yeah, his on-base percentage is incredible right now. Uh, I, I don't think his call-up is imminent or anything. Pete Crow Armstrong, I imagine, is still ahead of him in the pecking order. He's, he's been sent back down. But Davis, Brennan Davis, is looking like a dynasty asset again. Uh, I, I, I do want to highlight Carson Williams here. Sh- Ray's shortstop prospect 
who was a consensus top 25 guy coming into the year, mostly because of defense and power upside that he impacts the ball really well. But I was skeptical of him because he was striking out upward of 30% of the time, even against a ball pitchers who are mostly throwing fastballs. How is that going to work? But he's gone to double a facing tougher pitchers is cut that strikeout rate down closer to 25%, which is still high, but it's manageable for Carson Williams. And, and the stat line looked great. Cause again, the quality of contact very high. Uh, so I am I'm more open to the idea that Carson Williams is going to be an impact player for fantasy, is a real dynasty asset. And uh, yeah, um, I will highlight really quickly here before we go, Luke Kieschel of the Twins, their second round pick this last year. Great uh, uh, plate discipline, both the strikeout and walk rates, very good. Uh, he may not get as much love as he deserves because his contact quality is nothing special, but he's he op- his swing is optimized for power because of his pull and fly ball tendencies, Luke Kieschel. So kind of a Davis Schneider thing going on, um, but potentially more upside than that because he's a base stealer too. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm beginning to, to like him as a dynasty asset. All right, for more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the Odyssey app, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5, and we will be back again next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.